All right, let us pray. Precious and Heavenly Father, Father, Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ, we thank you, Heavenly Father, for this time as we explore your word, oh, Heavenly Father. We ask, oh, Heavenly Father, that as you have brought us to this moment in time, allow your spirit reside, oh, Heavenly Father. Open our hearts, minds, and souls as we explore your word. We learn more of you, oh, Heavenly Father, that we may live a life that is pleasing unto you and that others may see the light of our life. We ask, oh, Heavenly Father, that you touch each my, my, my heart, mind, and soul. And for those that may be on their way, how are we that hurry them up so heaven father they may join in this bible study in this fellowship we ask you this in jesus precious and holy name amen and amen so 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 we, we're doing psalms 23 but before your mind will get your phones out get, we're going to do a, a, a kahoot and now uh, we're doing a kahoot so let me share my screen so get the kahoot out app out there we go. There's the pin number. And the Kahoot is going to be on Acts 8. So, um, cheating them, they're going to have an advantage over you. <laughs> or they should have an advantage over you because it's scripture we kind of went over. But, you know. I was going to say, yeah, change that to should. <laughs> so as soon as I see y'all the the rest of y'all on there, we'll get started and Jared, why are you always the last one to join? Uh, I'm on my way. I got a uh I, I, I logged in on my uh laptop. So um you know, I'm just it does uh, just right with Charge it to my, my head, not my heart. <laughs> all right, we are all here. All right, let's get started. Acts chapter eight, and we begin. When the persecution arose against the church in Jerusalem, where were the Christians scattered? Two answers. Fast you. Okay, two got it right, Judea and Samaria. All right, next question. Jared. Mm. <laughs> when the church in Jerusalem was scattered, who in particular was said to have remained behind? Only one answer so far. The apostles, correct. Okay. What man was a great persecutor of the church in Acts 8? The great persecutor. Now we're waiting on one more person to answer. Who's five seconds, four seconds, three, two. All right, you all got it right, Saul. Y'all had me concerned there for a second. Uh, David, you're getting uh, on, a, on a roll there. Who was first seen in Acts preaching in Samaria? Got it right, Philip. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, Philip was the uh, the right answer, so you don't have to feel bad. You all got it wrong. Name a magician in Samaria who became a Christian. Simon, correct. Simon the Magician. Who 
Who said to have been baptized in Samaria? Y'all thinking too long, both men and women. Okay. I, I get why y'all went both young and old. Which two apostles came from Jerusalem to Samaria while Philip was there? Yeah, one person got it, Peter and John. Who's that? Jared? Oh my God. Y'all think Jared's cheating? When did the Samaritans receive the powers from the Holy Spirit? Yeah, when the apostles lay a hand on them, yes. Okay. After Simon was a Christian, he was told that he would be forgiven of sins when he did what? Yeah, when he repented and prayed. I don't know, Cheatham's catching up to uh, Jared there. For what reason did the Ethiopian church, Ethiopian eunuch go to Jerusalem? Why did he go to Jerusalem? To worship. What form of transportation did the Ethiopian eunuch use? Chariot, nobody got, y'all can get that. Oh man. What book of scripture was the Ethiopian eunuch reading? Isaiah, nobody got that. <laughs> okay. The second to last one, who preached to the Ethiopian eunuch? Philip, correct. It's the last one. Wow. Jared, she didn't even got that one. Come on. We actually talked about Philip. When the Ethiopian eunuch heard about Jesus, what did he want to do right away? Baptize. Who got that one? Let's see. Who? Jared, you came in third. Four out of 14. Chinum, congratulations. Six out of 14. David got seven out of 14. I want my gift card. I was only three out of first place, maybe four. <laughs> <laughs> but you had the lesson <laughs> you had the lesson when we talked about philip i'm under duress i 
No, you're right. And I should have remembered those things, but I'm terrible. I'm terrible. All right. So, uh, Kingdom, them that when, when we do, when I do these, uh, um, that's why David said he wanted his gift card. I always do a $10 gift card whether of uh, their choice of Amazon or, um, what is it? Not Amazon or Starbucks, right? Or Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah, I want Starbucks this time, though. All right. Yeah. Appreciate it. I'll make sure you get it. So let's go. Let's get into our lesson, okay? Um, so today's lesson, we're looking into uh, the 23rd Psalm. In God we trust, right? The good shepherd, you know? And uh, so, you know, just want to bring out that, there we go. Some, some highlights of the scripture, excuse me. Um, some highlights of the scripture um, as we, we take this in mind, right? So Psalms are traditionally used in funerals, right? To bring comfort, right? Um, and the one thing we, we, uh, we do believe about the scripture based on um, the reading and the study is that David um, is believed to be the writer of this particular Psalm. It's, it's referred to as one of the Psalms of David. Um, I believe that it was written probably later on in his life. And um, as we look at the scripture, what I want you to keep in mind is how do you, how do we see this aspect, right? That it was that he wrote it later in life in the scripture. And then I also want you to keep in mind is when you think about David and his life, do you see some similarities to your own life? And then how can Psalms 23 have meaning for us today? And is there meaning beyond the funeral? Okay. So those are things I want you to keep in mind, right? Um, so here's the Psalms. I want somebody to read it, but this is the this is the King James version. And here's the more easier one, the, the International Children's Bible. So um, somebody want to just pick, read these six verses because this is the whole psalm. It's just six verses. Yeah, I got you. Um, a song of David. The Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. He gives me rest in green pastures. He leads me to calm water. He gives me new strength for the good of his name. He leads me on paths <clears throat> that are right. Even if I walk through a very dark valley, I will not be afraid because you are with me. Your rod and your walking stick come. You prepare a meal for me in front of my enemies. You pour oil on my head. You give me more than I can hold. Surely your goodness and love will be with me all my life. And I will live in the house of the Lord forever. Okay. So makes it a lot, a little bit more easy, a lot, a little bit more plain, right? King James, we have the these and the thou's, but uh, the meaning is not lost in the transition when we talk about um, 23rd Psalm. So the first thing um, I want to point out in the Psalm, right? In the beginning, right? There's submission of David. And he's trying to say that there's submission and that in the submission, right? Um, all our needs and desires are going to be met, right? We see that in the second, the first and second, well, the first to the third, right? Because in here, the first verse, we talk about the Lord is my shepherd, right? Um, when you think of a shepherd, what are you thinking about? And I guess that's, this is a question I have. What do you think about when you say the Lord is my shepherd and I have everything I need? What do you think about? Like uh, <clears throat> just being like safe, uh, being watched, being, you know, you have the one thing that's going to always provide for you regardless. Right. So the expectation is, is that there's be the safety and um, this comfort, this protection, right? Um, and, and then if you look down in the second and third verse, right, it's really talking about what the shepherd is supposed to be ensuring, right? 
He gives me rest in green pastures. He leads me to the to calm water. So again, this is dealing from the perspective of uh, you know uh, a culture that's used to sheep taking care of sheep. So the you know in this instance, right for sheep, green pastures meant food. Calm waters was you know you could either get to a rushing river and the sheep wouldn't be able to drink, or it was a calm water where they could go ahead and they can uh, drink and not be concerned about um, you know, falling in or being pulled in because of the way the, 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 the water is, is growing, so is, is flowing. So with that, right, he's gonna provide for us, right? Um, and then in the third verse, he says, he gives me new strength for the good of his name and he leads me on paths that are right. What do you think about that, right? When you think about that, now this is David, and I'm gonna uh, bring some things up about David, um, but when you hear that he gives me new strength for the good of his name, and he leads me on paths that are right, what, what does he mean by, what do you think that David is trying to say he gives me new strength? And if you're not sure, let me give you an example, right? I mean, so, so in this scripture here, right? Um, as you see, the, none of these are questions, right? They're statement as if David and his song is a statement of fact. And so when we talk about, in this, when I ask the question is how do we know that David was, wrote this when later on in life? Because this is more of a testimony for him so that others would know the goodness of the Lord for him in his life. And David didn't really experience challenges until he was, um, until after he killed Goliath and, and came under Saul. And so he faced many challenges. He made, he, he faced dark times. Um, when he became king, he faced a lot of dark times, right? And so, but through all of the times, God saw him through. So this is really him. And that's why a lot of um, theologians think that this is written later on in life, because it's a testimony of all the things that God brought him through. That he could say that the Lord is his shepherd. And he uses this also this um, idea of the shepherd, because David was a shepherd, and he knew what it meant to take care of the sheep. So he brings that same parallel in trying to um, write this song about God that praises God, but also lets us know um, about how he trusted God. So when you're going through challenging times, don't you kind of feel like that you're weak or that you sometimes um, at the end of the day, of a bad day, when y'all get in, um, don't you feel like that I don't want to be bothered and I want to get in the bed and turn the TV on or get my favorite snack and just look, look at TV or maybe not even look at TV. <laughs> Have you been there? I see. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Yeah, and, and, and so in that we need new strength. Right, because sometimes we don't want to face the challenges that we face in life. We don't want to face whether they're personal, whether they're work, whether they're, uh, they're family. Uh, it could be something that um, you saw in the news and had an impact, but it takes away our strength. And I, and um, and we look for God to be able to give us the strength to go through. And when we can't go through, to carry us through. But even in doing that, right, in the middle it says, for the good of his name. What does that say? What, what does that make you think or hear when you hear for the good of his name? Right? He's going to feed you. He's going to protect you. Right? Um, the words ahead of that says, he leads me on paths that are right. So he's going to guide you. He's going to give you new strength when you have no more strength, right? Because the scripture talks about the fact that when 
I'm weak, he is strong, right? So he's providing all that, but then in the middle of all of this goodness, he puts in for the good of his name, you know? In, in, in King James, you know, it, it says that, you know, um, he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. So in there, there's that thing that David puts in there that says, for, for the good of his name, for God, for the Lord's name, for God's name. Um, what that, what does that, do, what does that make you think, right? He's going to do all this stuff, but it's for the good of his name. For me, it kind of ties back to how you're saying this is somewhat of a testimony, right? Mm -hmm. And you know how people are always saying like the light of God shining through you, you being a reflection of God's goodness in your life. That's how I read it. Okay. But, and, and, and I get that and that's good. And I think that's right. But also too, I th um, let me add something onto that is that um, God... God is providing all this for us because we're his sheep. But the main purpose is that he gets glory, right? For the good of his name, you know, so, so yes, you're right. It shines through us and we have to understand that he's doing all this, but it's also uh, for his glory, right? Now, verse four, right, where we see, even if I walk through the very dark, valley i will not be afraid because you are with me your rod and your walking stick comfort me talk to me about this what, what does this say and and think about the the worst times in life that you've gone through and how you felt when 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 that happened to you as you went through it and when you came on the other side does this speak to those times for you yeah, I mean, definitely. Uh, as you go through, I mean, anything, anything challenging, anything risky, um, definitely have like felt. I, I haven't felt the actual like scripture like that until after the fact, you know. But um, because of those because of those countless experiences that I have had where I have been stressed, worried, you know, going into a situation, being in a dark place, um, but then being able to come out of those places um, and out of those situations uh, in, a, in a more lightful situation than, yeah, I mean, I definitely can attest to that, that now I'm not afraid going into certain situations, well, most situations. Okay. I want to, I'm going to bring you back to King James for a second, because one thing it says in King James, which is lost in this translation, says, yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, right? I will fear no evil, right? This, through the valley of the shadow of death. This is a closer translation to what uh, um, the original language is trying to speak. So when you hear the valley of the shadow of death, right? Here it just says a very dark valley right? It, 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 it takes out the shadow of death, right? So it's not just a regular valley, but it's a valley where something is um, that gives the, the sense of the shadow of death. But what I wanted to point out is because it says the shadow of death, you cannot have a shadow unless there's some light. If you have no light at all, it's just dark. It's not shadow, it's nothing. So even when you're in the dark place, you're not in the dark place, right? There's some light being shined in there. There's some hope in that, that, that light is hope, right? And so when you were talking about not being afraid, um, here it talks about, um, he, David says, I will not be afraid because you are with me. Your rod and your walking stick comfort me. Um, in, in the uh, King James, it says you're riding your staff. Um, to understand this even further, the, this, the, you need to understand the significance of the rod and the staff, right? The rod was used 
to keep the sheep in line. The staff was used to help guide the sheep. So, um, and then I think you've heard this scripture over and over again because I'm sure that you know, you know your parents have said it over and said, spare the spare the rod, spoil the child. Right? So the rod was used for discipline. The staff was used to make sure you went the right way. So so can you can you if you think about when you went through those some tough times, some dark times, and you and and you were trusting in God. Were there times that maybe the rod was used to kind of say, you know, get on the right path or, you know, that God kind of gave you a little whack to say, come on, keep it moving? Yeah, I think he may, he may bring it. He may, I, mean, I think he may have even done it through bringing people into your life during those times. Yeah, okay. So, like, a mentor, uh, I mean... I've had it with like just regular random people that I've come across where like a story, like them sharing their story, you know, kind of like scared, did a little scare straight tactic in regards to what I had going on, you know? So um, I think, and I, I think that's what makes it really unique. That's what makes it like beautiful is that like, you don't know what that rod, like what the form of the rod will look like in your life. Um, you just have to kind of be like just attentive to it. Cause I mean, I guess there, and the, on that same note, there have been times where like, it'd be a, a several rods that I <laughs> need to, you know, show face. They kind of get me on the right, you know, path. Double so, hmm. Okay. So. Anybody else? Yeah. Um, the rod is an interesting one for me because I feel like in the moment, um, I don't react too well to it. But then afterwards, after, you know, I see how it's helped me navigate whatever needed to be navigated. Sometimes you need someone being like, nope, that's not what you're doing today. That's not what you're doing this week. That's not what you're doing this year. And then in hindsight, I can see that it was actually beneficial for my progress or my growth. Um, so usually in the moment, I, I can't always tell if the rod is really um, doing me good, but typically afterwards, after some reflection, uh, I can see that it has worked out well for me. Okay. And, 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 I heard you talk about uh, people coming into your lives and, and, and things coming, but could the rod also have removed things? People, opportunities, certain things. Yeah. We're talk, talk about things coming yeah. in, but sometimes maybe it's about closing the op, a door. Absolutely. And Jared, okay. you to say something though? I, I think Jared was saying something yeah i was just agreeing that the rod can you know like kind of teach you a couple lessons on you know and just life and the, the things that you're doing are consequences of your actions you know okay and so um and and so but in here david says um you know god's rod and his walking stick comfort me. So if we hit get the rod, we're, we're also going to get the walking stick that's going to help us get get back on the path, right? To get back with, and, and from from this perspective, with the rest of the sheep, which would mean the body of Christ, right? Because I, and and in nature, right? They say that. Predators prey on those who straggle behind the herd. So if the shepherd is keeping everybody together, he's able to protect us, right? So, but, so let's go to the, the next verse. You prepare a meal for me in the front of my enemies. You pour oil on my head. You give me more than I can hold, okay? 
Um, so in the midst of those who are your enemies, our enemies, right? He's saying that while, you're, while your enemies are before you, planning, looking to hurt you, he's going to prepare a meal. He's going to provide you sustenance, strength, um, while your enemies are sitting in front of you. Um, then it says, pour, uh, he said that God will pour oil in your head. Now, oil was um, what they used to do for um, hospitality in that time. They would, when you would come into someone's house, they would wash your feet. They'd use oil. Um, sometimes they'd rub it on your hands and your feet. Sometimes they would actually pour it on you. Um, the scripture of when Jesus was anointed with oil, uh, a very expensive oil, that's an example of hospitality. And that's what David is saying here. God's going to prepare a meal for you. He's going to give you that sense of hospitality. And um, to the point that you're going to have more than what you can hold. So in the midst of a fight, midst of a struggle, God's just going to give you, it's going to make you be in a place, a, com a place of comfort. Mm -hmm. And then that last verse, it says, surely your goodness and love will be with me all my life and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. Right. So in those last two uh, verses, what does that mean today? Right. Think about today with everything that's going on. Right. Inflation is it, inflation is out of control. Uh, the last time I pulled into a gas station, I was paying four dollars and forty seven cents a gallon. Right. You know. Thank God my kids are grown. There's no baby formula in the stores. You know, um, the economy is, is struggling. Stock market is down, you know, um, like, and there's, and, and there's war and rumors of wars all over. And people are being, you have shootings happening almost everywhere. Um, in the midst of all that, what is, what does the scripture say? So regardless, God's going to give us, so regardless, God's going to give us sustaining power. That's is, what it's like is, to me. That's what it says to you, but I guess what I'm saying, is it relevant? Does it help with, does it help, does it help us see where God is relevant in our situation today? David is saying in here that we need to trust God. Yeah. He's, so, so is it relevant today? Can we see that actually, can we see that God can actually do this? Do we believe that? Yeah, I mean, the provider for us in the midst of all of this. I mean, I guess I had a, like, obviously COVID and all of that. But I mean, you think about the last two years, like, three if you want to put it in more perspective but like you think about the COVID inflation and like Black Lives Matter all that stuff you know for us to still be here um you know like living I think alone like at that point um I just feel like that speaks enough volumes about you know having trust and faith in him you know okay and and, and and that being the case, I like that response you have, right? Well, here are some points. I'll make sure you'll get the deck, right? That I put in here, um, right? Because we kind of touched on all of that, right? Peace, sustenance, he'll restore any lost strength, guidance for his namesake. Talked about loss, pain, and fear, okay? Um, and then we talked about God will comfort and support you, right? And we talked about what the staff and the rod represents. Um, I'm going to send this to you because in here, I also identify some of the key scriptures that talk about what David went through and, and how David's testimony um, gives you a perspective of David's testimony in the 23rd Psalms. Because David lost um, 
a child. Yes. Um, it, and, and yes, he lost a child because he did, he sinned, but he still lost a child that he, he was praying to God for seven days and the child died. He lost a son who actually rebelled against him, Absalom, um, you know, tried to take the kingdom from him and um, he was killed and he was crying over that. Um, before he was king, David was on the run from King Saul. Um, king Saul has tried to kill him, I think, at least three or four times. One time through a spear while he, and, and, and just barely missed him. Um, even after David did so much to support Saul. Um, and, and the list goes on. Um, at, even though David was a man after God's own heart, David experienced much heartache with his family. Um, you know, through, through much loss. Um, he, I think David even dealt with the fact that he had a son that raped his daughter. You know, so he experienced a lot of heartache with his family. And at the end of the day, he could turn around and write this Psalm and, and say that God is still good. So I have those scriptures. I'll send you the deck for that. And then the last thing is, is that um, just that you would read it in reflection uh, is Second uh, Samuel twenty-two. Um, it's another. It's it's uh, it's scripture, but it's the words of a song that David wrote um, after God had delivered him, um, you know, delivered him from um, the giants and from Saul. And the the reason why I'm I want you to kind of look at that is you just look at the first seven scriptures and you've probably heard this before um but you know uh the the first uh three scriptures the first two scriptures are scriptures that um most people in the church uh have said over and over again but this is coming from david after god has delivered him from so much and it says that he said the lord is my rock my place of safety and my savior the Lord, my God is my rock and I can run to him for safety. He is my shield and my saving strength. The Lord is my high tower and my place of safety. The Lord saves me from those who want to harm me. And um, this is again, the, the children's Bible version, but these, these, this, is a, this is a scripture that many people have used to, to uh, be able to stand through trials and tribulations to understand that the, the Lord is the foundation of their salvation. The Lord is uh, the foundation of their faith. And they don't have anything to fear because God is their rock. And that is the consistency that we see. So that going back to Psalms 23, that's used a lot for funerals, it's more than just a funeral of scripture. It's a scripture of hope and a scripture of strength. Um, but it's also a scripture of submission to God. Because in all of this, we have to be willing to be sub, sub, to submit to God so that when we go through the valley or the shadow of death, when he uses his rod and we, we get upset <laughs> and get mad, you know, um, we have to be able, humble enough to try and um, understand what God's trying to do so that then he can use his staff to, to bring us comfort. Okay. Questions on what we've shared, what I shared with you so far tonight? Um, any, you know, thoughts around that? Okay. Mr. Jarrett. Yes, sir. If you ain't on video, you get to pray us out, but um, any prayer requests um, uh, or in, any topics or scriptures y'all want me to cover? And then um, next week or in the coming weeks. I think I'm good to go. I, I will, Lisa, I don't have any uh, preference. Okay, well, next week I'm gonna be um, diving into, back into uh, Acts, but, um, well, let me tell you, into the New Testament, I should say. We'll probably be dealing with the, the armor of God. So that may take us a, about two or three weeks, okay? All right, Mr. All right. Ford, you want to pray us out? Yes, sir. 
All right, everybody, uh, bow your heads. Um, dear Heavenly Father, uh, we come to you today to uh, express our thanks um, and to share love and information um, about your word, Lord God. Um, <clears throat> thank you to those that are able to be here tonight um, and fellowship and um, learn more about uh, David and um, how our faith um, is steadfast in you. Uh, Lord God, and we pray that we're able to apply these same uh, stories and life lessons um, in the Bible and that we're studying to our lives, Lord God, so that we may be a better follower of your of you and your love. Uh, thank you for allowing us with this opportunity, and we look forward to the weeks to come. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, we'll see y'all next week.